Welcome back to Cast Album Chat with Tyler. Uh, I'm Tyler once again, and this week we're going to be talking about one of my introduction musicals. Um, so what that means is that everybody kind of has one of their first musicals that they saw um, that really got them addicted to musical theater. Um, I had not yet seen a professional production of any show whatsoever, and I went to go see this musical at a university, and it blew me away even though I was probably a little too young to understand the ins and outs, the intricacies of the show, and that show is Into the Woods. I think that there are people that kind of put themselves into a corner. You're either a Sondheim person or a Lloyd Webber person. And I think if you are one or the other, you're kind of living life a little poorly. So we have to mix it up a little bit. Last time we talked about Avida, and this time we're talking about Into the Woods. So let me give you a little bit of background on how I was introduced to Into the Woods. I had never seen a professional musical theater production, and we had a friend that knew somebody in a cast at a university nearby that was doing Into the Woods, and they said, come check it out with us. I had no idea what it was about. I hadn't heard the music before, um, and so I, I was really interested just to know that there was a musical about fairy tale characters. The good thing about this show is that you go into it already knowing a little bit about it. Everybody knows these characters, um, Little Red Riding Hood, Jack, Cinderella, Rapunzel, we know all of these characters already. Um, and so we get to see the flip side of things, you know, when they're living happily ever after, and then once upon a time later. Before I go any further, I'm sure you've heard it in this video and it's driving me crazy, but I got this new chair and it makes this sound. So it's not me, it's just my chair. So I didn't start my Into the Wood, uh, Into the Woods cast album collecting till way later. Uh, I kind of got swept up in the Lloyd Webber side of things, and so I went after the Phantoms and the Avitas and all that stuff. Uh, and then later on, I think it was in college, I had a wonderful friend who had done the show in high school, and he was addicted to the VHS, not the DVD, not the Blu-ray, the VHS of the Broadway cast of Into the Woods. Um, and so I watched it again. I was immediately rehooked to the show. Um, it's not just the music. It's not just the lyrics. It's not just the the book of the show. It's a, the perfect marriage of all of these things together. Um, and it's really the most accessible, I think, of uh, Sondheim shows because it still has all of the complexity that his other shows have. Um, but you're you're automatically starting with um, the source material is, uh, as I said before, something that we all know, so it gets you right into the story immediately. Um, so in college, I started listening to these recordings, and we're gonna start right away with the original Broadway cast album of Into the Woods. I have to apologize, my case has completely disintegrated, <laughs> but it did, it, uh, it comes in a, what was a two CD case, uh, and the reason that they did this is because it has this really big, thick libretto. So it's got all that in there, and it's got some pictures, and it's got all the lyrics and whatnot. Um, so you can follow along when you're listening to it. Um, if you have seen the video, uh, maybe this might not be your favorite recording, to be quite honest. Uh, the cast is unmatchable. Bernadette Peters, Chip Zine. Um, I, I could go down the list of all of them. They are all fantastic in their roles, and you can especially tell when they've had a little bit more time to simmer um, because what happened with the the video is uh, they opened in 87 on broadway um by 89 i think basically all of them maybe all of them if not all of them had left and they were brought back in for a couple of days to record that video um so they had time to think about it you know as all actors do when you're just kind of taking a shower and you think oh i did that show about five years ago but i should have done this i think a lot of that happened and they are Unbeatable. I mean, truly unbeatable. It's hilarious. Uh, you laugh, you cry. It was better than cats. I didn't say that. Um, so anyway, this uh, recording is the original Broadway cast recording. And for myself, honestly, you guys know I'm a weirdo. So I always go to the original Czech cast or the original Icelandic cast because that's just the way that I swing. Um, so generally, original Broadway cast recordings are not my go-to even, strangely enough, if they are the best recording of the show. Um, this, I, I wouldn't put under that category necessarily. Um, because we have the video, 
uh, I'm just so enamored of that, and I wish that there were um, like an audio soundtrack. I know I use the S word, but it would be a soundtrack, not a cast recording. Um, a, kind of an audio soundtrack of that video. Um, I just think, you know, since this is the first crack that they had at the show, of course the performances are wonderful, everybody's in great voice, which is surprising considering that most Broadway cast recordings are made the week after opening, so you know, they're rehearsing the whole time, um, doing previews, have opening night, and then the next week they'll go into the studio, and so everybody's really tired. Uh, everybody sounds fantastic, it just maybe doesn't have the, the, the depth um, that we're used to with maybe later recordings or like I said, especially the video. Um, but this cast, I mean, you, you, you can't beat it. Let me, let me read through here because I don't want to leave anybody out. Um, Bernadette Peters, Joanna Gleason, Chipsy and Tama Aldridge, uh, Robert Westenberg, Barbara Byrne, Kim Crosby, Daniel Ferlin, Merle Louise, Ben Wright, Joy Franz. I mean, I, I could go on. This cast is kind of a who's who of Broadway. And not only that, it's, it's, it's a who's who of the Sondheim world. Um, so if you are an Into the Woods fan and you don't have this, I, I don't know what you're doing. This is the, the perfect place to start. It's a wonderful recording, uh, music direction by Paul Gemignani, uh, and can you get any better than that? I don't think so. So definitely check it out, but let's look at some more recordings of Into the Woods. Okay. All right, recording number two of Into the Woods. And this is one um, that you might have seen in your local Barnes & Noble, uh, but a lot of people don't have. And this actually is my go-to cast recording of End of the Woods, and it is the original London cast. If you look at that, there's the logo, it's a completely different logo. If you look at the pictures on the inside of this thing, you can tell that the production is very, very different. Um, I think the physical production was probably a little darker, um, and you can even tell in, in the recording, they just kind of took a darker take. Additionally, everybody, of course, speaks and sings with a British accent, and so it rings maybe to me a bit truer um, we're assuming that it's old world, all of these fairy tales came from Germany and France and maybe England. Um, and so the, these accents, they just sound maybe more authentic to me than an American accent. Uh, which is not to say one is better than the other, it's just a personal preference. Um, now this cast is also wonderful, also kind of a, a who's who list. Julia McKenzie, who's like the first lady of British musical theater, still singing, wonderful. Uh, Amelda Staunton, which if you don't know her, Wikipedia, I, I know you know her, you've seen Harry Potter, but you should know her for the other things that she's done because she is a firecracker. Um, Patsy Rollins, Clive Carter, Eunice Gason, Ian Bartholomew, Jackie Dankworth, um, who I'll talk about in other videos, she's done quite a bit as well. Um, it's just um, a very, very different take on the show and I don't think you can see these pictures very well, especially with my light there, it kind of shimmers. But you can just kind of tell it's a little bit darker, literally and figuratively. Um, but y you know, the takes on, on, on these characters, um, it's like they had never listened to the original Broadway cast recording, which is neither a good or bad thing. It's just that if you need a different version of it, this is something that is a complete flip side, to be honest. Uh, Julia McKenzie, her, her performance on this recording is spectacular. It has a new, well, new song. For me, it's a new song. It was written, probably written for the original production, maybe cut, I don't know. But they put it in the, this London production in 1990 uh, called Our Little World. And it's the best version of Our Little World because Julia McKenzie has a crazy, crazy range um, up and down. And she um, probably has about the same range as the Rapunzel in the show, so if that tells you something, it's really, really impressive. Um, I think everybody has really good chemistry. Um, I can't remember, let me double check here. Uh, music director Peter Stanger. Um, this orchestra is wonderful, and I think it probably goes back to the production. You know, I, I said in my first video that sometimes I will criticize uh, recording, not necessarily on the performers or the music directors, um, I'll give them praise when they need it because, you know, if you're good, you're good. Um, but, you know, I think the production, this is a, a John Yaff. This did not come out on That's Entertainment Records or J Records, uh, but he produced this thing and it has a wonderfully theatrical feel to it. Um, and it's just a complete package. So if you can find this one, it's not that hard to find. You can find it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Definitely pick this one up because this is my go-to into the woods.
Okay, now we're delving a little bit deeper into the woods, and this is kind of my bread and butter sort of stuff. You guys know I'm really weird, so I can't just stop listening to shows in English. I have to listen to them in foreign languages. So we're going to the original German cast recording of End of the Woods, or as it's called there, Abit den Wald, which was not a very good pronunciation. I'm sorry, all my German friends. I should have practiced, but I have not been practicing my German. Um, Sondheim in German or any other foreign language is a tricky animal. We know that the way that he writes is so, uh, his rhymes are so tight and all of his words are so deliberately chosen um, that whenever you have to take these, uh, his text and translate it and put it with the meter of the music and have it rhyme and have it make sense and be witty on top of that is very, very, very difficult. Luckily, they were in spectacular hands. Another name you're gonna hear come up time and time again is Michael Kunze, um, and he is probably the premier um, translator of German musical theater pieces. And it, like I said, it, it was in the best hands with him. I am not completely fluent in German, but from when I, when I do listen to this, uh, I can't imagine anyone having done it better. If they have retranslated it in the last 30 years, I would love to hear it. Um, this show um, premiered in Germany in Munich in 1991, I believe. And the weird thing about this recording is it was, well, it premiered in 91, it was recorded in 1992 and 1993, and released for the first time in 2011 by Sound of Music Shop, which if you have not been to Sound of Music Shop, go to Essen, Germany and check it out. It is the best musical theater cast recording shop you have ever been to in your life, so it's worth the trip. Um, it was a, a co-release with Sound of Music Shop and Bobby Music. Um, and so I'm just thankful that this came out, that it has seen the light of day because it was just sitting somewhere for the longest amount of time and nobody was able to hear it. Um, this cast, the really interesting thing about them is that they, you can tell that they are operatically trained uh, for the most part. Um, so, you know, we get a darker take on the London cast recording and this one even seems maybe even a little darker um, just because of the way that I think personally, in my humble opinion, that the German language shades certain text. Um, and on top of that, these voices are, they have a lot of heft to them for the most part. And so um, this recording, we, there are a couple of musical theater performers, April Heile as um, Little Red, and also the witch Marianne Larsen uh, are really from the musical theater world. But the rest seem to me, at least by listening to them, to be from the opera world and um, it's actually really great. It's not one of those recordings that you say, well, they get a little bit too woofy or they're not acting it. They act it just as well as any other cast. It just happens to be very precisely sung. Um, and there's not a lot of information in here. You just get, you know, cast list and whatnot. Um, my, case, my case is broken. I'm sorry on this one too. All of my cases are broken. I just went through a move, so. Anyway, this is a wonderful recording. If you can find it, I definitely recommend it. Uh, this is the original Munich cast of Into the Woods, Ab in den Wald. Okay, so we're going back to New York. After this, we're gonna get back to Europe and get to some of the stranger stuff. But this is from the, the revival um, that opened in 2002. Um, and it comes in a really, really cool case. Uh, this is from Nonsuch Records, and they really put out some, some really cool uh, packages because this one, it's got the outer case here. And it's got, of course, the CD and this even thicker libretto than the original one. This is how the original Broadway recording should have released, but I don't think they were releasing CDs like this back in the day. But it is just a, a really nicely um, printed and, you know, cardboard stock version of the libretto. It has a summary, it has a cast list, it has some pictures in there. Um, I did not see this production. Um, I have heard it criticized by a lot of people, um, but I would not criticize it so hardly by listening to the recording. I think most people come across very well. Um, and of course, I'm gonna be reading another cast list. Uh, with a smaller cast, I can probably just list them out, but these big casts uh, with some big names in them, I gotta read them, I'm sorry about it. Vanessa Williams, of course. Um, maybe she wouldn't have been my first choice for the witch. Um, and, and she doesn't jump off the disc uh, as much as some other witches have, but I think she commits herself really, really well. Um, some people might call it stunt casting because she is, um, ha had done Broadway musicals before. She did Kiss of the Spider Woman, um, had done some television musicals before, but not really known for her theatrical performances. 
but I don't think that was the reason that she was cast. I, I think that she, she acquits herself very well, um, and she's worth a listen for sure. Uh, we also have Greg Edelman, fantastic. John McMartin is a legend. Uh, Stephen DeRosa, Carrie O'Malley, Mary Louise Burke, we'll talk about her later, uh, Christopher Sieber, Adam Wiley, uh, Adam Brazier, so uh, we have all kinds of names in here uh, as well that, that, that will be familiar to, to Broadway fans. Um, this recording is also music directed by Paul Gimignani, I do believe, yes, and um, I think that the, the production, that, you know, the, the, um, the actual recording of this uh, sparkles a, bit, a little bit more. Uh, we get some of the more, some of the details and the orchestrations that we didn't get before. The sound quality is a little bit better, uh, and like I said, the cast is really great. Oh, and how could I forget? I don't know why she's not popping up as the first name. Ah, at the bottom, and Laura Benanti uh, playing Cinderella. She is hilarious. If you've seen her on television, you know she's hilarious. But she has one of the greatest soprano voices on Broadway right now. Um, so, you know, the the cast is fantastic. The, the, this recording itself, maybe it's not my go-to, uh, but I do crack it out every once in a while, I'll give it a good listen. Um, you get some more material, uh, Sanhan made some changes, well I think it was more James Lapine made some changes to this production. Um, so we get some stuff at the end of On the Steps of the Palace, I believe. Uh, we have two wolves in Hello Little Girl instead of one, plus the three little pigs that come in. So it might, uh, a lot of people don't really enjoy that additional material. Take it or leave it, it's up to you. Uh, but the cast sounds really good. Okay, here's where I get even weirder. Um, so if you guys don't know, um, they speak Spanish in Spain. Uh, but Spain actually has quite a few languages, um, and they're not just dialects of each other, they are actual languages. And so you have the Castilian Spanish, which is typical Spanish uh, from Spain that most people speak. Um, you have the Basque language, you have the Galician language, but right now we're about to talk about the Catalan language, or the Catalonian language, as some people say. Um, that is in the northeast region of Spain, and that the capital is Barcelona. Um, I'm gonna leave all the politics aside, that really does not matter to me. Uh, what does matter to me is that they are fantastic uh, when it comes to musical theater. I've seen a couple of musicals up there, uh, one actually in Catalan, and the performers are, uh, they blew my hair back. Uh, they were fantastic. Uh, and so the, here are two different recordings, even doesn't, doesn't look like two different recordings, of the same production of Into the Woods or Bosco Shindins. Um, we're gonna start with this one right here. This uh, production started in Girona, um, which is a smaller city in Catalonia, and um, there are not as many tracks on the CD. There are just 16 of them, and I haven't even taken it out of the plastic because this is a very rare recording, and um, if I happen to pass away, I just gotta make sure my husband can live on this stuff, so this is one of the gifts to him. <laughs> Um, so yeah, th this recording is great, and this one was taken live, actually, from the, rec uh, from the theater in Girona. Um, the cast itself, um, oh, let me get out the other CDs so I can list some of them. I think the, probably the most known person for people outside of the United States uh, would be Gisela, who sings uh, Cinderella, or Benta Fox, um, because she was the dubbed version of Elsa. Elsa? Yeah, Elsa in Frozen, both in the Spanish language and Catalan language in Spain. So if you, um, I don't know if they have that available on Disney Plus, but if you can go on there and listen to it, if you see Castilian Spanish or Catalan, you will be listening to Gisela, um, who has um, a pop career, um, but has really done a lot of musical theater, and um, she sounds great on this recording. Um, let me let me check take a look at the rest of the cast. Monet is another name that you will see. Um, she's done Mamma Mia, uh, The Full Monty, a wonderful belting voice, uh, and her acting on this recording is great. Um, I'm kind of mixing these two together. This is when the show moved to Barcelona, and they recorded more of the the score. And this is the one that's in the studio. So the one I listen to more than the other is the Barcelona cast recording because. Of the clarity it um, still has the energy of a live performance but I can hear a little bit better my Catalan is not great although I did listen to this recording while reading through the script in Catalan and if you do speak Spanish then you can understand quite a bit of it but mm, not the majority I don't know um, where was I cast maybe yes uh, and 
Marc Pujol, eh, Ferran Frauca, uh, Josep Maria Gimeno, Annabel Totusaus. Uh, I mean, th it's a really, really wonderful cast. And um, I also think that the translation of this thing is pretty darn good. The thing that makes uh, Catalan different than English is the way that their syllables are stressed. Um, so there are specific ways in which, um, which a translator has to go about this. Um, and I think he did a fantastic job. I believe that the translation for this, let me just double check here, is between uh, two gentlemen. Um, it was actually on this one, it was just one. It was uh, Juan Vives, um, and he did the translation and adaptation. And if you listen to this and, and read along and think about the original English lyrics, uh, he did a fantastic job. And so bravo to him and bravo to the rest of the cast. If you can find these recordings anywhere, get them. Uh, they're really, really wonderful to listen to. This one came first, Girona, and then uh, Barcelona. Wonderful cast, wonderful orchestra. The production is great. If you can find it on eBay, get it. Okay, so I just have a couple of more things to say about End of the Woods. We've kind of run out of official cast recordings now, um, and I usually like to get the physical release of certain recordings, but there are two that I have electronically, and one of them is the soundtrack from the movie. Um, I don't generally include soundtracks, but there is a lot of music from the show that made it into the movie. Um, this is not like Cabaret, which I also love, but the, the movie is not very much like the stage show. Um, but Into the Woods is very, very similar. There are some devices that we don't have. Obviously, we don't have the narrator, if I remember correctly. Um, so there's certain certain parts of the plot that, that are taken out. Uh, but the cast does very well, and of course, headed, uh, headed, by? Uh, headed by Meryl Streep. And she sounds wonderful on this recording. I was kind of giving all of these CDs a listen the other day, and I just kind of clicked through some of the, the, the soundtrack, and uh, I was surprised at how great she sounded. Not that I don't think that Meryl Streep is a, a wonderful singer. Um, she's a, a fantastic singing actress. Um, and, but I was just surprised at how much I was enjoying it. And of course you get the huge orchestra, which is something we've never heard with Into the Woods. And so the, the soundtrack is something to check out, or the movie if you want to watch that. Um, the cast may or may not be to your liking completely. Uh, but not what I would consider to be a complete failure from Hollywood, so bravo there. Um, if you can find it, it's worth watching. I think it's on Disney Plus as well. If you've already got that, you don't even have to spend any money on it, so give it a look. And the last recording of End of the Woods that I have in my collection is from the Théâtre du Châtelet in Paris. Um, and there, were, there was a string of years in which uh, this theater, uh, headed by Lee Blakely, was performing Sondheim pieces, well, not just Sondheim pieces, musical theater pieces in general, but there was a, a string of years they were doing Sondheim pieces in English in this theater. And they had um, international casts uh, with background both in musical theater and opera. Um, so they had Sweeney Todd, which we are quite accustomed to seeing in an opera house. Into the Woods, as I said, with Munich, uh, the Munich cast recording, there had been operatic voices that have recorded the score before, um, but we get the complete uh, recording, we get the complete show here um, because it was broadcast on the radio. Um, and so you get from the downbeat to the very end. Um, this cast, I just kind of gave it a listen through. Um, it is available in certain places, uh, but it came out through France, uh, France Music, and I cannot remember the radio station that it was played on. Um, of course, the sound quality is not the best because it is a live performance taken at that moment. There was no post-production done on the thing. It was just the performance and that's it. Um, also something I have to say about these casts is they probably don't get as long a rehearsal period as other shows would. So th these shows, I don't think they run for very long, if it's a week or a month or something, but it's more like a regional uh, performance here in the United States as opposed to a commercial run, which it is not a commercial run. But I'm lucky to have this um, because even there are parts of the video, you know, that, that are edited in certain ways, but you get the full show. Uh, the cast is really wonderful. Uh, Beverly Klein plays the witch and she comes from the musical theater world, although I do believe she has done some legit stuff. Um, she did Candide with the National Theater. Um, but the rest of the, the cast, um, if, you, if you look at the cast list, um, you'll see these names pop up in these other Sondheim productions at the Théâtre du Châtelet. 
uh, and they, they do a great job. Um, maybe not my go-to recording, but I feel very lucky to have the whole piece from beginning to end on record. <laughs> So if you have any doubts about these recordings, if you want to see some of the, uh, the track lists or the singers or the covers of these CDs um, and, and later videos, LPs or tapes, um, you can go to castalbums.org and it is an invaluable resource. Um, I, I, they have things listed that I never knew existed and so I had to go out and find them and it's really helped me with my recording. So definitely check it out. Go to castalbums.org and you can look up all these different recordings of Into the Woods and any of the later recordings that I'm going to talk about in other videos. Thank you once again for spending a few minutes with me while I ramble on about musical theater. Uh, during this whole quarantine and pandemic, we, like I said, we've all been shut in and I have brain blockage and I just need to talk about this stuff. So thank you very much for, uh, for listening and for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed already, down below, you can subscribe, red button. I would really, really appreciate it. Tell all of your friends um, and tell them to come be geeks with me and talk about cast recordings. Thanks. See you later. Bye.